In this video series, I'll be addressing cybersecurity with Groove devices. This video is going to be focusing on using a custom self-signed certificate with this Groove Rio. In my previous video, I also used a self-signed certificate, but it was the default self-signed certificate for the default hostname that was generated here at the Opto factory before it even shipped out. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be using that same certificate, I'm going to replace it. I'm going to be creating my own hostname of my own choosing, and then generating a whole new self-signed certificate. I'll download that certificate file, and then import it into my Windows trusted store here on my desktop. Now, while I'll be doing this with a Groove Rio MM1, you should know that this process is going to be exactly the same for other Groove Rio modules and our Groove Epic series, as well as other Groove devices that we may release in the future. Because I've already gone through the process of using that default self-signed certificate with this device, we can see here if I bring up on my desktop that I do have a secure validated connection. You can see up here in my URL that I am in fact on HTTPS and I have a little padlock up here next to that. If I select the padlock, you can see that it says my connection is secure and that my certificate is valid. If I select that, you can see some more details about the certificate right here. This is the self-signed certificate issued to that default hostname that you can see here, and it's issued by that same hostname. Now, this video, I'm going to be replacing both the hostname and the certificate. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll notice is that I already have my username and password credentials filled in. This is because I'm using Google Chrome's autofill on this connection. I can only do that if the connection is secure and validated. So I can go ahead and click sign in right away. Once I've signed into the device, I can straight into Groove Manage. First, we'll have a look at the default self-signed certificate and what we're going to be adding to it. I can find that under Security and select Server SSL. Here, I can view the decoded certificate right here in my browser. You can see it's issued by this Opto049174 and the subject of this certificate is that same hostname. You'll also notice that only things under the subject are that default hostname, that common name, and the country, which is US. When we generate our custom self-signed certificate, we'll be able to add some extra details there that you'll see a little bit later on. Now, before I go ahead and create the certificate, there's a really important step I need to take, and that is to set my time zone. If I don't have my time zone set correctly, it's possible that my certificate is only gonna become valid sometime in the future. And so until that future time, I won't be able to create a validated connection to my device. So we'll first set our time zone. You can find that back in the home screen under system. Just select this time option up in the top left and you'll see the default time zone here is the region universal. I'm not in the universal time zone, so I'll need to click this link to change it. I'm in the Opto headquarters and that's in Temecula, so I'll need to select America and then select my locality, which is going to be Los Angeles. So I'll scroll through all the options here and till I get to L and we'll see right here, Los Angeles. I'll select that and make sure I click set zone before I leave this system menu. If I don't click set zone, the setting is not going to stick and it'll basically be pointless to change it. So I can confirm that by clicking back to system, opening time again, and we'll see that the region has in fact been updated as well as the locality. So I know I'm good to go there. Now that that's all set, I'm going to create a custom host name. To do that, just go under the network settings and select status. Here, you'll see the default hostname up here in the top, and to change that, just select configure, and you'll get a text box up here in the top where you can type whatever you want. I wanna pick something a little bit more meaningful to me. Because I'm using this Rio to demonstrate how certificates work, I'm gonna call it Rio-cert for certificate. And when I click save, it's going to update my network settings and bring me back to this Rio cert. Default host name is no longer going to apply. The other thing that's not going to apply is that old certificate that I had installed for that default host name. Because I don't have a certificate for Rio cert, I will need to create a new one-time exception to connect to this new device. My system doesn't know who Rio cert is or if it can be trusted, so I will need to make a one-time exception. If you're not really sure why this is happening or how this process works, check out our previous video that goes into a bit more depth. We'll have that linked in the description below. For now, I'll just create a one-time exception to get to this server. I know I trust it, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed. This will bring me back to the login page because I've never logged into Rio Cert before, and because it's not a validated connection yet, because I don't have a certificate for Rio Cert, I do have to type in my credentials. It's not going to autofill. 
With those typed in, I'll go ahead and sign in, and we'll land back on our network status page. Up here at the top, you can see that my hostname has in fact changed to rio-cert, and if I go back, go back to home, and open my security settings under uh, server SSL, you'll see that I'm still using that same default self-signed certificate that applies to this old default hostname. You can also confirm that by clicking not secure up in the top left. It says the certificate is not valid, and that's because the certificate that I have for this device is in fact issued to and issued by this old hostname. So I need to generate a new one. It won't generate it automatically. So I will need to generate a new one for this new hostname. I'll go ahead and click OK and collapse the certificate here. I'll go ahead and click Create Certificate because I've already set my time zone and replaced my hostname. When I select that, you can see that my server name is already filled in for this new custom hostname I've created, and I can add all these extra details that will appear under the subject. If I select this, you can see I've filled in this form before, so I can autofill it right here. I'll apply it to this developer at opto22.com email, and I'll fill in the department as developer. You'll see I also have my organization here, my city, which is Temecula for Opto headquarters, my state is California, which is fully spelled out, but my country code it shouldn't be United States, it should just be US. This should be a two-letter country code, and you can find that by looking up ISO standard for 3166-1. If I open a Google search for that in a new tab and bring open the Wikipedia page, I can see a full list of all the different country codes you want to make sure you get this alpha 2 code. It should only be two characters. And every single country has one, so you'll be able to apply this no matter where you live. For United States of America, it's just US, so that's what I'm using. With all of that filled in, I'm ready to go. You'll also notice that the expiration date and the RSA key size are already default filled in for you. You probably shouldn't touch those unless you really have a reason to or your IT team wants you to, but the defaults are really solid, so I'll just leave those as is. Now I'll go ahead and click Create to generate a new key certificate pair. When I do this, I'm going to be replacing that self-signed certificate that I had installed earlier. Because it's a whole new certificate with this whole new hostname, I will again need to create a one-time exception, because I've never had this certificate work for this device before. So once it's done loading and this page refreshes, I will need to create another one-time uh, exception. So I'll reload my page, and yep, here we are. So now I'll go ahead and click Advance and proceed with that one-time exception. I land straight back in because I've already logged into this hostname before. I'm, I'm right back in Groove Manage, and I can return to my home screen and confirm it all if I wanted, but I know everything's set to go, so I'll just download this public certificate. You'll also notice that if I look at the decoded certificate, it has all of those extra details filled in. I can see my common name, my uh, unit right here, which is developer, my organization, locality, and state. It's all filled in, all the extra details. I can also confirm that by coming up here to the not secure, selecting certificate is not valid, and we'll see yes, I have in fact replaced the entire certificate. We'll go ahead and click OK and download that certificate. Here, I'm going to put it in the same folder that I had my old default self-signed certificate in, but I am going to rename this so that it's something a bit more appropriate. You can see here I used the hostname underscore public cert. That's just to help me keep track of which device this file applies to and exactly what the file does. I'll do the same thing here. I'll call it rio-cert underscore public certificate or public cert. However, I'm not going to save it as the .pem file. I'm going to do something a little different in this video. I'll, instead of saving it as the file type .pem, I'm going to change it to be .crt, and we'll see why in just a second. With that done, I'll go ahead and click Save, and open that file. Here we can see I have my public cert for the old hostname, and my one for the new hostname. With the .crt though, Windows actually notices that this is a certificate. You can see that it even has a different logo. What that means is that I can just right-click the certificate, and it lets me install the certificate right here from the file browser. If I select that, I get this nice certificate import wizard that you can see on my screen now. I am going to do this for the entire local machine. That means no matter who logs into this computer, they'll be able to securely connect to this device instead of just the user that I'm logged in as. You'll notice that when I'm doing this for the local machine, I do get this little symbol here, and that means that I will need to provide admin privileges to this program. When I select that, I get a pop-up saying, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? I'll go ahead and say yes, 
and that will allow me to continue with this import wizard. Here you can see that it wants to automatically select where the certificate is stored based on the type of certificate. That option is no good for me. I need to make sure it's in the trusted root certificate store. So I'll select place all certificates in the following store and select browse. Here you can see I have the option to add it to my trusted root certification authorities. So I'll select that option and click OK and you'll see that pop up right here. Now when I select next I can confirm the details and hit finish. Now right away my certificate is installed. I'll show you exactly where it's imported because my import was in fact successful, but for now let's just confirm that it's working with the browser. I'll click OK and bring open my browser again. Unfortunately it doesn't work right away. Even if I were to refresh my page it doesn't just automatically make it secure. Even if I open this in a new tab it's still no good, it still says not secure. I could try to close Chrome and reopen it and it might be good then, but unfortunately even just hitting the X in the top right, Chrome will often leave hang up tasks in the background and you don't want any of those because this is a cached session now. So we need to completely kill Chrome and come back with a clean slate. So to do that, I'll open my task manager, right click Google Chrome and end task. Before I do that, I will log out of my account. Now that I'm logged out, I have my certificate imported I'll go ahead and kill Chrome. Just right click, select end task, and make sure it's killed completely, and then bring it back open again. I'll select my account, and right here we're back. I'll just type in https colon slash slash rio dash cert, and click enter, and right away. You can see I have the padlock up in the top left, and it says my connection is secure. If I select that, we can confirm that it is validating my certificate, and if I select that, you can see that I am using that self-signed certificate that I just generated. Now if I click OK and put in my credentials and hit enter, you'll see I am in fact prompted to save this to my device. If I were to click save, I can now autofill this anytime, or if I don't want to, I can just click never and it won't prompt me to do this again. So that's all done, we've finished the goal of the video. If you want to stick around, I'll show you exactly what happened in the background here. To do that, I'll open the Microsoft Management Console by selecting Start, typing in Run, R-U-N, click Enter, and I'll be bringing open the Microsoft Management Console. You do that by typing in MMC and click Enter. Because this is an, another admin level program, I do have to allow this app to make changes to my device. So I'll go ahead and click Yes. Now this brings open the Microsoft Management Console that you can see on my screen now. You'll notice that there's no certificates here, and so I will need to add the snap-in. I'm going to go this through this pretty quickly, but I go into a bit more detail about how it all works in my previous video. To view the certificates, just select File, Add Remove Snap-ins, select Certificate and add that to your selected snap-ins, and again I am going to be doing this for the computer account, not just my user account. So I'll go ahead and click Next, confirm that it's my local computer, and you'll see it here is in my selected snap-ins. Now I just click OK, and here we go, we can see my certificates. I'll double click that, and go under my trusted root certification authorities, that's where I installed it. Here in my certificates list, we'll be able to see that Rio device that I just imported. There it is right there, Rio Cert, so it is in fact under my trusted root certification authorities. You can also see all the other certificate authorities that I've imported, or are here by default, and you can also see that old self-signed certificate. This is no longer going to be valid for my device, so I can actually delete this. I'll just select it and hit the delete key, and it's really warning me to be careful here. Because I could delete a certificate authority that might apply to many other services like potentially even Google or Amazon or a bank service or even our own Opto websites, you really want to be careful what you're doing here and that you don't delete the wrong files. I know that I've selected my old self-signed certificate that's no longer valid, so I'll go ahead and remove it. Now I just have my new custom self-signed certificate, and if I close this, I no need to save my settings, I am in fact connected securely. In future videos, I'll be going over how some of those certificate authorities or CAs work, so if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed. Hopefully this was helpful, and if you have any questions, come to our forums at forums.opto22.com. We'll have a link for that in the description below. Thanks for watching.